So now I will uh, invite Olivier to show us how we prepared for the today experiment. So as I already said, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. I'm uh, Olivier Chalut, I'm one of the laser engineers from Thales who has been part on this, uh, this endeavor with all the guys from Thales Romania, Thales France, and so on. And I'll see them, of course, for the, the LBTS. And I'm going to present to you today uh, how we set up the system for uh, today's demonstration. So first of all, we will use arm B of the system, which is in that part of the, this part of the laser system, with this compressor that will be then sent up. So the beam will be sent into that direction. We have put a mirror here. We will see a little video of this. And then the beam will propagate all the way here down to the beam dump at the end of the system here. So we had to replace this mirror because in the original design, this mirror is a hollow mirror. So it's a, a flat mirror with a hole in the middle because it's normally used to send the beam in to the long focal length optic and refocus the beam through the mirror, through the hole of the mirror to the experimental chamber here. So in this experiment today, we have put a plain mirror, if I may say, so a fully plain mirror. And the change, to show you what the change of a meter size mirror here, here is a little video of what's going on. So we had to, uh, of course, unmount the, the old, uh, or the old, the hollow mirror, that I would say the hollow mirror, remove it, and then place back the new uh, fully flat mirror. So connecting all the, uh, motors and especially the, the LEDs to measure, to look at the diagnostics of the mirror. So we see that the mirror is enlightened here in order to be uh, seen the defect of the, of the coating. Then clean around the chamber and lock down the chamber again, the 72 screws that are around the chamber to lock it down. Thanks, Guy, André. <laughs> and, uh, uh, urgent to do that on a daily basis uh, very efficiently and to pump down after from there. Oh, I'm sorry, it's starting again. So then the beam propagates for this long tube down to the chamber PM, what we call PME6, where you, we should have the long focal length optics, the long focal, so the all the mounts that were inside have been removed and we're sending the beam here directly to this beam dump, the 10 petawatt black hole, as we, as we call it. So this is the uh, setup that we will follow for the beam. So we have optimized the pulse duration um, at the output of the uh, compressor. So optimization of the pulse duration uh, these last few days allowed us to have a 21.1 femtosecond pulse duration at full with half max. We measured the energy contained in the main pulse to be at 90% of, of uh, the, the energy in the main pulse. So in order to make sure that we have really 10 petawatt output of the system, we need what we would need to read as energy at the output of the compressor is at least 230 four joule, if we approximate a little bit, in order to have the 10 petawatt output of the system. Moreover, uh, we are measuring this pulse duration on the diagnostic bench here, which includes the dispersion due to the uh, optics, so through the leakage mirror and the window here, which correspond to, uh, so, 80 millimeter at 45 degree for the leakage mirror of, uh, of glass, which is fused silica in that case. Window, the output window here is 65 millimeter of fused silica also. And the beam splitter that is two millimeters. So we calculated over all of this, the dispersion that has been added by all those optics when we have the 21 femtoseconds here we added this dispersion into the dazzler such that we are sure that we have our shortest pulse in the beam transport and on the optics 
on which we will propagate the pulse, uh, the 10 petawatt pulse. So we will have a true 10 petawatt, hopefully a true 10 petawatt in the beam transport here. So different uh, things that you will see in the main screen over you. So we will have the spectrum of the oscillator, the rate of, sorry, can I go back? Yeah. Yes. So the uh, region beam profile, the XPW spectrum, the front end output here, then uh, amplifier 1.1, amplifier 1.2, amplifier 2, the output of uh, beam profile of the output of arm 3 one you will see that it's slightly uh, disturbed, so unbalanced in intensity it's due to the diagnostic that is a focusing optics on an uncoated wedge that creates this unbalance. And we will see the spectrum that we have at the output of the full amplifier chain and the near field beam profile that you will have, that we have on the diagnostic bench, so through the leakage mirror. Here you also see the energy uh, that we will get at the output of the compressor. As you can see, we already did the uh, did the test, we got 250 uh, joule. So the important parameter that we will have to look at is this in here. Um, we have also all the diagnostic on the vacuum system, so the 10 petawatt compressor here and all the uh, beam transport uh, that in which the laser beam will propagate, so the laser beam will propagate from the beam B, 10 petawatt here to FNR2 here to PME6 to the beam um, I think uh, laser is on and uh, we should uh, be starting to crank up the power. <laughs> okay, let's go. So I'll go with, uh, with Johan close to the experimental, to the control of the system. So you'll find back on the main screen all the parameters that we that we talked about. So right now we have the, the system already running for, for a few hours uh, since this morning, in fact. So amplifier two, uh, which is the amplifier corresponding normally uh, when pumped fully to the 10 petawatt output. One petawatt. Uh, one petawatt output, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's run right now with uh, only uh, 400 half Gaia because it's ener the energy that we delivered from it is sufficient in order to uh, seed the last amplifier to reach the 10 petawatts. So we are running right now with about uh, 29 joule at the output of this amplifier. This amplifier is run right now at uh, 1 hertz. And then we have a fast shutter that allows to down rate the those shots from uh, one hertz to one shot per minute. So you will have to be patient and to put your, your timers on. The next shot will come in about uh, 35 seconds. And uh, so we will start by uh, amplifying in, uh, with one atlas in amplifier uh, 3.1. So I'm opening right now the shutter here of the atlas one of amplifier 3.1. And we should see the energy on the next shots in now 10 seconds increasing uh, slightly or a bit more than slightly, I would say. So we are getting now at the output of the compressor about 48 joules. Two, two petawatts. Which corresponds to about two petawatts. Then I will switch on the next atlas. So amplifier 3.1 will, in that case, run at its uh, full specification. Uh, the next shot is in 20 seconds, so 
One shot per minute, it's pretty long, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish it would be faster. So five seconds to the next shots. And this shot allows us to get to 75 joule at the output of the compressor. Which is 3.2 petawatt. 3.2 petawatt. Then I will switch to the next amplifier. In the next amplifier, I will start with Atlas number three. That I will also open the shutter of both arms of the Atlas allowing to deliver about uh, 80 joule. Just to let you know, we are running the, all the atlases at a level of energy of about 80 joule when they can, at the optimum, deliver up to 100 joule because we are already able, you will see, to reach the full energy that we need without even having to switch on to the full power everything. So next shot is coming. Eighty-three. So we have eighty-three joule now. Three point five petawatt. I will switch one more atlas on. It's only shutter B. Look on. We're talking. Mm. Who's playing with the diagnostics? So we will now have the next shot in about uh, 20 seconds with uh, one more Atlas firing. We are at 117 joule, five petawatt. I will put uh, one more atlas. The next shot will come soon, in a few seconds. And we have 6.3 petawatt. <laughs> I will add one more. The timing, so next shot in about 15 seconds, we're coming to it. Now, 190, Eight. if I, if you allow me the average. <laughs> Eight petawatt. So I will put one more atlas. Each time, as a reminder, each time I had about 80, 80, joule, of, 80 joule of pump. Uh, so with, uh, with the efficiency of the extraction, we get about an increase of about 30 joule each time 
we had uh, a bit more than yeah, 30 joule with the loss of the compressor at the output of the compressor, we have an increase of 30 joule, which corresponds to an increase of about 40 joule in the output of the amplifier at each uh, shot with one more atlas. Next shot in a few seconds. So 228, as you can see, we are already very, very close to the 10 petawatt, as mm. we mentioned. 9.7. 10 petawatt is at 234 uh, joules, so I will allow myself to add only half on an atlas small in order to, to get to the uh, 10 petawatt level. So it's in order also to demonstrate that we have sufficient spare energy in order to uh, obtain even 10 petawatt, even if we have one atlas that would fail, we can still have 10 petawatt by rising up all the atlases to their nominal uh, energy of 100 joule and getting the output power. We will reach the 10 petawatt in five, four, three, two, one, and we have now 10 petawatts <laughs> delivered on the on the output of the system. I then, would like to ask my software guys and everybody to record the data of uh, all the data spectrum beam profile of every stage to make sure that all the data are recorded of this uh, of these shots. 10.75 10 petawatt. So we will make one more shot. What you are seeing on the, on the screen also, so we are seeing the near field, uh, the output of the compressor, which is pretty uniform and pretty nicely looking. You will tell me that the far field doesn't look good. So the far field doesn't look good because it's optimized for the output of the beam transport. And we are looking at the far field on the diagnostic bench. So through the aberration of the diagnostic bench, and neglecting the aberration that are being compensated for the beam transport. So, but the, the uh, focus point has been demonstrated to be able to reach uh, 0.9 of strain on the diagnostic bench. So the X shot has been obtained already? Yes, 250 joules, and we are still at 10.7 petawatt. So I will uh, let it run one more shot, and after I believe I will give back the floor to to everybody. And I thank all the team here for this work, for their time, for their effort in order to reach this. All the guys from Inai, all the guys from Thales Romania, and all the guys yeah, from Thales in France that help us a lot in order okay. to obtain this. Okay. And the next shot in one second. 247. Thank you very much, and I give back the floor to uh, uh, So, uh, thank you again for the uh, for uh, all the effort of, uh, of all the people involved. I will add uh, also Axiom, which uh, was uh, strongly involved in the development of the laser beam transport system, uh, Gentech for the nice uh, 10 petawatt portable black hole. And uh, yeah, thank the entire team and thank you for that, for uh, attending this uh, demonstration.